Chas Smith calls himself a welder. Amongst other things, he's a fantastic sculptor. He makes these sculptures which sound extraordinary. Once it's recorded, that can be pitched to what you want, but it's the quality of the acoustic sound. It's the only thing that makes this sound. Well, that's another sound. Where are you going to get that? That. You know, you take a look at my shop. My shop is chaos. You want chaos? I've got chaos. I was building instruments back when I was in school to try to get different sounds, and uh, one thing led to another. Percussionists can walk into a hardware store and make a symphony. Clamps? Got clamps. This is aluminum, and this is a parachute cable. All the instruments have to be made out of junk, surplus, and stuff left over from jobs. That's the rule. In the studio, you'll see that some things don't make any sense. Why did I use tubing with holes in it? Well, because that's what was here. Aluminum door. Not too bad. It's just the sound, but it hits an emotional core in you. You mean the wah? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's, it's like, you, you know, it's a tricky thing sound. I realized the more organic and real I kept things, I started getting rid of all my sense because the visuals that Zach was creating had some sort of foundation, and it was, it's all a bit homemade. The, exactly. The music. We tried to make the movie look like it was made by people. When you make a movie that's so right. visual effects heavy, there's a danger of the computer taking over yeah, and the movie, you know, and that's what we try to avoid. And I think that musically it does the same thing. So this is Bertoya, named after Harry Bertoya, who was one of my heroes, which is where I got the idea for rods and plates. Rods, plates. This is tuned to a 14-tone scale, sort of. And the resonators are also tuned to a 14-tone scale. Now, they're not tuned to the same 14-tone scale, but they're tuned to 14-tone scales, and that's close enough. And the idea is that whatever I play will get resonated someplace. Other than if it had been designed by a committee, no single human being could be so crazy as wanting to design an instrument as illogical as this. And so, let's see how friendly this thing is today. You realize how much work and how much care and love and ingenuity goes into these instruments. Once I got these sounds, and I start to be able to manipulate those sounds and start writing tunes with them. One of the things we can do these days is we can go so way, way beyond the symphony orchestra. 